Hey everybody, what do you do on lockdown while waiting for motorcycle parts to arrive? I found myself playing with bismuth and uh, today I'm going to try and cast the first thing I've ever tried to cast which would be a velociraptor claw because, but what else are you going to cast? If you've seen some recent videos of mine, I've been playing with bismuth, which is a, a very interesting metal. Watch those videos to learn more and see the crystal structures it can form. But today, I just want to cast something with it. I've never done any type of sand casting before, although this may not actually be sand casting technically. This might be delft clay or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it feels and looks like sand, but it also smells a bit clay. It's weird. Anyway, point being, uh, I have learned what I can learn. I have made myself some sand casting moulds, as you can see here, and I am just going to attempt to cast a bismuth version of this, which is a replica uh, Velociraptor claw which I bought off of eBay. Now, where this hasn't got a flat side, I'm going to have to build one so side of the cast and push this halfway in, which isn't ideal. Um, normally, if you're going to do something round, you have it in split casts, so there's like a flat side to each, and you do it in two halves and then put it together, but... Uh, It'll be okay. Right, so I need to melt the metal. I think this will be enough if I fill it up to do it. I think. If it's not, I guess we'll do it again. Um, but it will be the easiest thing to pour with. So, I just need to put that on there, turn up the heat, and let that get to melting. So when this clay arrives, it comes in a block, a really hard block, and you have to break it up. Uh, and I believe one of the easiest ways to do that, and I've already been doing this as you can see here, although this is starting to sort of re-solidify, is to just chop it. Now you can buy sand casting flasks as these are called uh, for about 20 quid on Amazon. You can even buy them in a kit with the, the clay stuff. Uh, but I felt cheap um, after spending so much recently on bismuth and I thought I'd make one for a few quid out of a piece of wood. Uh, I think this will work well. As you can maybe tell or maybe not tell, this has two sections to it. That is because I thought it would be good to have two small sections. Um, it was not because I realised that my clay wasn't enough to fill this whole thing. Can we, can we agree on that? Yeah, okay, thanks. So the claw itself will fit very nicely in here, so what we need to do is fill this up. Um, one of the things I did when I put this together was I dr used a Dremel to make a groove on the inside because I've noticed lots of them have that and I think it's to give the sand something to key into. Uh, but the first side is just fill it up and compact it down. I'm really concerned as to how hard this this sand clay is. This is supposed to be for fine detail, but... Uh, now I need to use talcum powder as a parting agent. Talcum powder is not the best thing, um, and there are better talcum powders than what I have, just except this is just a test run. If this works, then you know, things can be improved. Basically the talcum powder is going to stop the other half of the mould sticking to this side of the mould so we can separate it. Okay, so now I have to somehow get this pressed in at least halfway in. And this is what I'm really worried about because this stuff is solid. Yeah, I've barely made a dent. Plan B, let's think about this. Okay, with a lot of time and improper technique, I've got this down into the sand. I basically softened all the sand up, pressed it down, squidged around it, and just spent a lot of time getting it formed to it as I can, about halfway up. Well, it needs to be halfway up, so I need to build this a little bit up. I'm not having another fail day, so even if this is bad, <laughs> I want to make something. Right, so that then belongs on there like that. 
don't use this as a reference. I even know this is wrong. But I just want to give it a go. You can't even really sieve it. Right. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, this is kind of the moment of truth. Will it come apart? Mm. I think it might. It's kind of stuck in places, but we might get away with it. Maybe. Okay, the first thing I need to do, uh, yeah, is make a hole to pour the metal through. Okay, so we've made our hole through there, then I need to make some vent holes, which, oh, no, no, get that grease off of that. I know this is a terrible, terrible mould. And this is probably going to completely fail. And the flashing's going to be horrible. But I'm this far in. So why don't we just find out. Okay, so I've created a little well and a hole that goes down in. That's the pouring hole. The vent holes come up and that allows the air to cut, go out as the metal goes in. Well, I've prepped the mould the best I can. I pop the claw back in there for a minute to let everything settle down on it. Put that back together. I'm just going to pour it. This is obviously not the most ideal pouring vessel. I'm not very confident about that. I don't think much metal went in. I mean, there's a good head of pressure and I did make the, the lines, but they might have closed and it might have held the air in, but we had no air bubbles come up. I think we should just leave this for a few minutes. Okay, I think it's been long enough. Oh my God. Oh my god. Okay, um, I wasn't prepared for this to work. <laughs> oh, it's so much softer when it's hot. <gasps> I bet you're supposed to warm this stuff up first. It hasn't even got that much flashing. Flashing is the where the uh, metal protrudes out the sides. It was something I can do now, and I should be able to just snap this. Yeah, let's chop that off. That needs to clean up. Uh, I think the best thing I can do about this is go and wash it under a tap. Just get the last of this off. I've got good news and bad news. 
Good news is, it's not as bad as I thought. It's actually full, which means it takes a lot less material than I thought. Bad news is, is it solidified, it blew out the other side. But I will still clean this up. Okay, let me give you a close-up look at the results. First things first, ignore my hands, this is glue, and I'll get onto that in a minute. So we started out with this resin Velociraptor claw replica, um, which I then wanted to cast in sand, and then cast, well, sorry, cast in bismuth in sand. As it turns out, it's a type of clay. And I've also learnt you should heat that sand up because it becomes very soft and pliable when it's warm, and then it goes hard when it's cold. I am sure you are supposed to do that. There was no instructions with it to tell me to do that. And it wasn't until I realised after I did the first casting, oh, you warm this stuff up. And then when I did the second one, uh, I'll get onto that again, glue. Um, yeah, it was a lot easier. So, here we go. I am more than happy with this as a first attempt. The casting mark is here, and you can see what I've done is I've filed it down. And I've put some holes and dots and stuff on it and then used a wire wheel on a Dremel to smooth it out. Uh, this crack in the back I don't even mind. I mean, it, it sits out quite proudly, but bismuth does that. But yeah, as a, as a first time attempt at casting in sand, or Delft clay as I say, uh, I'm actually quite pleased with that. And of course, because you can do one, you can do two. Uh, and I wanted to make one for Reno, so I made a second one. So this one was actually slightly easier to do, and we might have got a better finish in places with this one um, because I warmed up the sand and got fluffier, and, and it was just easier to work with then. Uh, however, on this one, it did crack all the way through, which doesn't really matter because this kind of looks like a fossil anyway. It, it makes it look quite cool. Uh, what I have done, though, is I filled this crack with glue, and that's how I got glue on my hands. With a very thin, very strong super glue. Uh, it shouldn't propagate any more than it has already. If you drop it, it might, but as it is, it should stay together, but it, it doesn't detract from it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm very pleased with these results. Of course, I can now cast anything uh, out of bismuth. Aluminium will be better, but I don't have the equipment to heat things up that hot, so that's why the bismuth is good. It's very expensive, though, that's the only thing. Um, but yeah, there you go. This may well be a first for YouTube, Velociraptor Claws cast in bismuth. <laughs> of course don't forget that bismuth creates these mad sorts of crystals on its own and if you want to see more of that well then watch some previous videos on my channel thank you for watching hit that like button if you enjoyed this subscribe if you're new here i'm on my way to 100k and i'd really appreciate it and if you want to help support this channel consider joining my patron for benefits like joining discord videos at least three days early uh questions in the q a and all sorts of other stuff thanks for watching Bye bye